Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. We've got some good news and we've got some bad news with the stock market. The good news is there's finally a trend to this market. I mean that sincerely because for the past month or so, I haven't really been in the market very much simply because there was no trend that you could follow that could be followed up on successfully from a trading point of view. But we finally have a trend. Yay, we have a trend. Unfortunately, or fortunately to some, that trend is decidedly down and it seems to be going down big time. The S&P 500 closed down below its 200-day moving average for the first time since March of 2023. We've got a decided downtrend and I've been day trading a lot. I kind of got to rev myself up to get into it. I bet small amounts and watch them very closely until I'm certain of the trend. These last two days have been an experiment sort of basis. And I've been money shorting. You can't make money uh, going up. You can catch it maybe, but that's so much luck because you're going against the trend. You know, we will have surges where it goes against the trend, where it starts to go up. Those so-called relief rallies, they will happen from time to time. And simply what I will do is I will get out of the market. The best thing is to have a relief rally and then it starts to come down and then I'm jumping in uh, with with both feet. And the shorts I'm using, I'm using ETFs. I short the market in general when it's like this. And I use SQQQ, which is shorting the 100 largest stocks on the NASDAQ and is triple leverage. So you make $3 for each dollar that the QQQ goes down, which is an index of the 100 largest stocks on the NASDAQ. Statistically, what might be slightly better or has been slightly better is shorting the Russell 2000, and that's also triple leverage, and I call it SORTY. Its symbol is S-R-T-Y, and that's triple leverage to the downside. You make $3 for every dollar that the Russell 2000 index goes down. Those are the hot trades right now, and those are what I will be doing until the trend discontinues and does not take a decided upturn. I will just stay out and stay in money markets and collect my 5%. But as long as the VIX is above 20, I will be shorting. I found that it isn't worthwhile to short when it's below 20. You need that volatility for shorting to work on the general market. That's all I mainly do right now. I don't think there's a stock that I would want to go long on for right now. Uh, Jeremy Grantham, uh, who's a master at predicting bubbles and when they pop. We also have Michael Burry. They've been warning us that this is a bubble, that it's going to pop. The Magnificent Seven, are the ones that have yet to pop seriously, but we're getting signs that they're going down. And the Magnificent Seven, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, Tesla, and NVIDIA are showing major signs that they're going down. Tesla has gone down 44% in profit, a negative 44%. That's how much their profit has dropped in the third quarter of this year. Their stock has come down 22% in the in the last three months. And there's nothing from the conference call that Elon Musk gave that gives us any reassurance that it's recovering anytime soon. There was nothing positive. Revenue was down. Earnings were down. Profits were down. Margins were down. Whatever you want to look at, it was down. And the news and their, their outlook on the future is not good either. If you think it's going to be saved by Cybertruck, Elon Musk thinks that you're wrong. They won't make make a cyber truck till the end of this year. They say they're going to make some in November. We will see. They're always predicting ahead of schedule. We've been waiting for this cyber truck to come out since 2019. <laughs> so we're used to waiting. We can wait a while. You know, there's two things you wonder about with how long it's taken for the cyber truck. Number one, you wonder, is there something fundamentally wrong with this truck that they got to keep re-engineering it? Or... Should we take comfort in the fact that they're being very careful to make sure that they got it right before they release it? Uh, hopefully, it's the second of those two, and I think it probably is. I think Tesla, they do things right, and I would expect that with the Cybertruck. But the Cybertruck is sort of like making the electric version of the Hummer. <laughs> okay, you're going to have problems with it because nothing has been done like that on an electronic basis. I think there's reason to have caution 
position and to worry somewhat about this outlet. It's been very negative for the stock. They asked Musk, well, when will it help, you know, things go forward? And he said, well, maybe we'll produce 225,000 of them in 2025. So he's not really expecting any ramp up until 2025. The general economy doesn't favor things going well before then anyway. It's likely that we're in a recession of some kind uh, next year. The yield curve has started to uninvert. That has just started to happen. Usually a recession happens about four to six months after that happens. It varies. People say different things. It's somewhere in that area that the recession will begin after the curve starts to uninvert. And everything is 5%. The 30 years, 5%. It's over 5%. It's like 5.2%. And so is the 20 year. 10 year is approaching 5%. It's like 4.95%. The two year is over 5%. It's like 5.12%, depending on the day you look at it. The joke is it's 5%, 5%, 5%, no matter what you look at. It's starting to uninvert. And they're all around 5%. So a lot of people are just calling it the pancake market. We got a pancake market now. I hesitate to go long on anything. Uh, The NVIDIA craze is over. Artificial intelligence is over for now. It'll come back, but it's going to be out for now. One of the big reasons is the United States has prohibited the sale of artificial intelligence chips, advanced chips to China. They don't want them to be using them for warfare or getting ready for warfare in case they have that in mind, which we worry about that in the case of Taiwan. But that's affecting all the ship makers. All the semiconductor ship makers are pretty much, most of them are coming down pretty significantly. The semiconductors is sort of the new oil. And speaking of oil, oil is in the 90s. You know, it's returning. It's going to go for 120, I think, eventually. We will see on that. Oil is so fickle and it depends on so many different things. But the conflict between Israel and and Gaza, Israel was thinking of invading Gaza. Thankfully, they have not. And I think part of the reason that hasn't occurred is because we have been diplomatically engaged with them and trying to convince them to take it easy on Gaza, go after Hamas and try not to destroy the place too much because we don't want to have to rebuild it again. The United States, I think we ended up paying for most war, at least one side of it or a large part of one side of it. And we end up doing the rebuilding too. And we don't need to be rebuilding Gaza every 10 to 20 years, depending on how bad the situation is. They say they need a two-state solution. That's probably true. You're always going to have disaffected people that need some place to call home, and that's what they want. That's what they need. You need some kind of stable state but that they can call their own and quit uh, attacking Israel and Israel not needing to control them so much. For right now, that's my plan. Uh, to trade sorty and to trade SQQQ, that's worked for me in the past, and I think it'll work for me again. Uh, taking it easy and being cautious. You want to be cautious doing this. I don't recommend this for the general public. It's something I've gotten used to and something I've gotten pretty good at doing. In my mind, I don't think now is a good time to go long in the market. I don't think we've reached a bottom. There will be a bottom. Not only is it our rates pause, but the Fed starts acting like they might decrease them. Now, people who think this stock market is going to change and is going to the Fed is going to cut rates, I think they're in for a long way. I want to remind them that in the 70s and the 80s, which I lived through, those high interest rates lasted at least 15 years, okay? Varied anywhere from 10% to 20%, depending on what what time period you look at. I guess that the lower rates were maybe 8%. The highest it ever hit, I think, was 20%. And generally, my feeling, having lived through it, is we were always somewhere kind of 12, 13% was kind of average for that long time period. And I think we could be in for that again. How are we ever going to repay this debt, you ask? Well, there's a payment plan coming, and it's coming in 2025. And that's when the tax cut that Trump with Congress initiated when they cut the taxes for the wealthy, that's when they expire. And I bet they're not going to reenact them because they will see it as definitely necessary to reduce the national debt, because it will be ridiculous by that point. Right now, the national debt is increasing by a trillion every 45 days. Think
think of that. We're at 34 trillion and every 45 days it's up another trillion and it, it just keeps gathering steam as the long-term rates continue to increase and it will hit that trillion mark faster and faster as we gain more and more debt. So is something going to break? I sort of doubt it. Not for a long time. It's going to take much longer than you expect, than most people expect, simply because the Fed is already bailing the banks out with their bank term funding program and their discount window. They're already bailing the banks out. They learned a lot from 2008, so that will extend the pain out a long time, and we get to live with high interest rates. I think it's going to be 5%, 5%, 5% for a long time. I think the Fed is secretly hoping that they won't have to lift rates. If they have to lift rates above 6%, that will be a disaster, okay? It already is a disaster, but it's a disaster in motion that they're trying to take care of at the same time that they're creating it. And then we got wonderful things like Congress is now proposing a bill to fund Ukraine, to fund Israel, to seal the border a little bit better than it has been. They're doing the border thing to try to get Republican votes on board with it, and it probably will work because they are for the border and they're for Israel. At least the Senate is for Ukraine. The Republicans in the House of Representatives can probably be talked into it. So I think we're living in dire times. I think it's looking like good time to short, and I will be shorting daily. I don't know if I'm going to hold overnight. I don't trust this market enough to hold it overnight. I find I'm best off to do day trading because we have a very uncertain market until we have a definite triggering event. We almost had a triggering event if Israel would have gone straight into Gaza, but they're trying to take it easier on that. And so I, I think it's going to be a day by day thing. And that's the way I'm going to play it. That's my story. That's the way I roll. You need to follow of your own resources and advice as to what fits your situation best as what I'm doing is not for everyone. You have to be used to this triple leverage stuff, which I am. And I'm willing to go long in the market. I'm willing to triple leverage it upwards if it would show a definite a trend upwards. And I love to trade stocks when the market is high. 2021 was like a dream. That was cool. Could we have those days return again? Well, I think we might be another 10 to 20 years before we see another 2021. But hopefully we can get back to the stock market increasing. You know, part of the problem was that they cut taxes. That added to inflation significantly. And Jerome Powell, he was raising rates at one point, and he got around 2%. And Trump started making speeches about, hey, why do we have these interest rates increasing? And Powell was coming up for a job review. And so he quit right away, increasing the interest rates. So I think he, his hesitation in lifting the interest rates dates back to that. And now I think he's hesitant to lift rates further simply because it could create an accident. And we never know exactly where those are coming from. Thanks for listening and watching. We'll see you in the next one.